Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about the cuffed endotracheal tube. This specific instrument is provided to us in a plastic sealed bag which is pre-irradiated with gamma radiation which indicates that this instrument is a single use instrument and it has already been sterilized by the manufacturers. Now coming towards the parts of the endotracheal tube. There are three essential parts. The proximal part, the endotracheal tube proper, which is made up of either India rubber, either Portex or PVC material. And the last part is the distal end, also called as the terminal part or the distal part. Let's talk about the simple aspects. So the, so the distal part of uh, the endotracheal tube, we can see here, it is having a non-traumatic beveled end and we can see that the terminal section is open and the beveling is towards the left side. Also a subterminal opening towards the right side is provided to us for equal and bilateral ventilation of both the lungs of the left side and the right side. Just before the two openings we have the cuff of the endotracheal tube. Now endotracheal tubes are available in uncuffed varieties as well. But the cuff of the endotracheal tube has three main advantages. The first advantage is that it will prevent any sort of fluid aspiration through the trachea. The second advantage is that it will prevent any form of gaseous leakage through the main endotracheal tube. And thirdly, it is specifically designed to maintain the position of the endotracheal tube in the trachea. Now coming towards the endotracheal tube proper, which is having a blue radio opaque marking, which is used to assess the position of the endotracheal tube via the chest axis. Further, it is having various markings as we can see here, indicating the distance through the opening. Fine. The distal most markings, the two major black markings are called the vocal cord guides and are 2 centimeters in distance. They are mainly to guide the distal end of the endotracheal tube through the vocal cords that is between the two vocal cords. Now just right here then ID 7.0. What does this number indicate? The ID is referring the internal diameter of the endotracheal tube. So endotracheal tube but obviously will come in multiple sizes. Since this is a cuffed variety, the sizes will range from 4 millimeters to 10 millimeters. The 7.0 is indicating the 7 millimeters of internal diameter. It is not the external diameter. The lumen is actually 7.0 millimeters. Fine. Now we can see a very small caption of oral and nasal. What does this indicate? This indicates that the passage of the endotracheal tube can be oral or can be nasal. Now both the approaches have their advantages and disadvantages. Nasal approach will prevent any obstruction to the operative fields in case we require uh, any surgical maneuvers in the oral cavity and the oral approach will prevent or rather provide a more comfortable approach for the endotracheal tube placement. Now just after it you have an OD 9.3 obviously now this you can correlate with the ID 7.0 as OD to be outer diameter of 9.3 millimeters and of course we have the markings. Now notice here that we have a small tube for the for the inflation of the distal most cuff. Fine. The blue colored pouch right here is called the pilot balloon. Fine. The pilot balloon in the endotracheal tube will act like a one way valve and ideally it will inflate the cuff after we inflate it with 4 to 5 cc of air. But for uh, clinical uh, or for demonstration let us infuse it with 10 cc of air. So we have locked it and now it will act as a one way valve to inflate our cuff. Fine. Again, it's a one way valve. So now the air will not escape back. To drain it back, 
again lock it and simply deflate the cuff fine coming towards the basic indications for an endotracheal tube we use an endotracheal tube in case of an cardiopulmonary arrest case to secure an airway for a case of emergency or an unconscious patient for administration of general anesthesia and for maintaining the ventilation in a case of severe respiratory failure involving copd pneumonia ards or any other sort of uh, respiratory failure though there are certain contraindications for an endotracheal tube in which case a tracheostomy is a must such contraindications involves laryngeal spasm laryngeal edema and upper airway tumors or carcinoma 